Hey, hey, everybody, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to episode 12 of Stationers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch. So let's get a solar panel. And this would be, there's four types. So the basic ones don't rotate at all. They're just flat surface panels. I have one here that I could demonstrate. Uh, this, oh, no, that's not it. Where is my surface panel? Uh, here it is. So it just looks like this. It's flat on the ground. It doesn't point towards the sun. And therefore, it has pretty limited amount of power generation. Because it can't angle itself. And then there is... The ones that angle themselves. The heavy one, I don't have the uh, astraloy to make. So I have to make the regular one. The heavy one is stormproof. The regular one is not stormproof. So that's what I'm talking about. Is that I'd have to designed it so that um, it's in its own glass tube protected from storms. Much the way that right now I'm protected from storms. And I'm going to make three for now. Trying to scale back the project so they're not so massive. All right, I'll give you one more vote, one more minute to vote on that. It'll be faster if I if you vote no. It will be, I don't know, maybe more interesting if you vote yes. It adds more volume to the base at least. Be nice to know when the storm was over though. Uh, the other things we're gonna need is more cables. Probably heavy coil cables. So I'm gonna print whatever heavy cable coil material I have left. That's actually not true. Because I need a lot of regular cables for the uh, the networking too. But I'm out of copper like usual. Feed the small batteries to the furnace. Uh, I could sell the small batteries to traders once I get a trade station, they buy them. Or I could uh, I could recycle them. You know, there's a lot of things that you could do with them. You don't have to just uh, melt them. Hey, I finished my tomato soup. I'm left with an empty can that I can fill with tomato soup again in the future. So I'm going to start working on the second tomato soup. It looks like you guys say you do want it in the base. So... Build solar. Got it. I don't know how far I'm going to get, but at least the weather cooperated. So, <clears throat> the thing about solar is it needs to be, um... It needs to be... It needs to have a clear path to the sun. So I think the probably the best way for me to build solar is... Gonna be a little weird. I might put the solar panels just above me. Floating. I don't know how I feel about that, though. So if it's part of the base, it means it shares the same, like, base atmosphere. Um, so the things that you want to consider when you're doing a solar panel is... You want it to be in a position where it actually has a clear path to the sun. Because if it's not getting sunlight, it's not generating power. I know that's kind of obvious, but... Um, a lot of the times on planets without, or moons, without uh, storms, you can build them on like a really high up array. But for this project, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do that. So the sunrise is around that mountain. So the problem is also that mountain blocks the sunrise. And then the sun kind of comes across the sky like that. So I want my solar panels to have a clear path to the sun as it crosses the sky. So maybe... Yeah, I have an idea how I'm going to set it up, I think. The other thing is the solar panels can't really float, and I'll demonstrate that in a second. Now that the storms are done. Uh, Jupiter 
I don't think it, it's not like it's not really calculated. I don't think. So so here's the issue: the um, the solar panels need to be placed on steel frames. So if I wanted to put solar panels, I'm thinking about putting them here as part of the base. Or maybe I don't want them necessarily above my farm because then it blocks sunlight. I could put them here though. Hmm. All right. What what section of the base? What section of the base to put the panels above the workshop? Above the farm. I'm using grow lights, so above the farm's not that uh, problematic. Or as a um, sky bridge off of the base. So as a sky bridge off of the base, uh, you're just going to have to picture it. It would be like if I uh, had like a glass tube here and then built outwards this way. Um, where solar panels are lined up like like this as a sky bridge. So it would be part of the base because it would be connected to the same sort of like glass tubing, but it wouldn't be necessarily attached to the base. And it looks like that is the most popular option, so I should start prepping for that. So I think for... Um, for symmetry's sake, I'm going to put the solar panels above the wind, the small wind. And eventually maybe have as many solar panels as I have wind panels. Or I could have stairway up. Hmm. The issue is, the more complicated I make the setup, the more volume I add to the base, and the more expensive the project becomes. But I kind of like complex. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab whatever I do. I know I'm going to need some more materials. So first things first, I'm going to grab some, some iron. And it looks like you guys want Skybridge. What's a wind panel? It's the thing that they train avatars on that spins around. Makes you more agile. All right, I basically ran out of copper. Uh, I'm very low on iron. I hope I have enough steel for the project. I should. I might need silicon as well. I'm going to try to just rush through this as fast as I can. I have a kind of a concept of how I want it. That's what I'll work on. But it's also going to so somewhat depressurize my base, but I'm okay with that. Uh, does it work to have an external door? So there are shutters uh, that you could build. They're hard to show you what they look like, but they're not easy to retract uh, from above. Whoa, yeah, that kit, uh, that suit battery really does run out a lot faster. Okay, I'm also nearly out of gold, so let me grab a little gold, and then a little copper, and we should be good to do some projecting. Yeah, unfortunately, the shutters don't work uh, as roofing as well as it does siding. So you can't... There are some... Yeah. There's just issues with it. It's, ha it's hard for me to demonstrate without drawing, but basically there are like doors that open and close, which you could use as like a, uh, a roof cover, but they're more expensive, and then they have to attach to something, which means that they limit the line of sight 
of the solar panel as as they go over. There's no like glass dome or something like that that would be superior. Um, yeah, yeah. Until they introduce like a. Uh, Components that that protect solar better, and and I doubt, maybe it's possible that they they never really design anything that does exactly that because um, there's already heavy solar panels that normally you would tech to. All right, copper. And my suit battery is uh, at twenty four percent, so I need to wrap this up quick. Yeah, the the big wireless batteries aren't great for suits, so maybe I'll I'll put a large battery back in and swap. Cause the cold temperatures of uh, Europa are destroying my suit battery. Oh, there's more lead over there. Yeah, uh, the same sort of structures like I had uh, on the Amy and the Venus run. Once I get indoors, I can show it to you. It's just uh, my suit battery is at a whopping 8%. So I'm going to try to get back to cover. One of the things I could do is I could just swap like the drill to suit battery because it's the same battery and then my drill's just low on power, which is far less of an issue because I have a lot of spare batteries on me. That's not hot anymore. Yeah, coal does drain it much more quickly, which is why keeping my power up has been challenging. I just realized I don't even have space for the iron. There. <laughs> Toss it into the lock. That'll work. Yeah, the, the flashlight, you're right, does take a lot of power. One of the ways around that is you can, um, you can haul around the portable, uh, light source on your, on your back. I don't typically do that, because I just don't like how it looks, but it's a very efficient way of, uh, of extending your battery life. So what I'm, I want to do is I want to put stairs here. Yeah, you can kind of see the arc of the sun now. So what I'm looking to do is I'm going to put stairs... Um, where, like, here, and have the stairs go up to a... Um, uh, to, like, a solar hallway. So let's get a whole lot of... I'm going to run out of steel. But wall kits printed. The glass. 
So I'll worry about the actual solar setup later, because I need the pocket space. So plastic and whatever glass I could get my hands on. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to build the whole section um, outside, and then once it's all insulated and internal, I'll just pop this window and mix the outside-inside atmosphere because I don't have any plants going, so it doesn't really matter if it gets a little cold. I can always heat it back up. And it's going to become a little de depressurized too, but again, that doesn't really matter because I can always pull more oxygen from outside, adding to the atmosphere in the base, and then uh, heat that oxygen up with this little oven contraption. All right, good. Everything is nice and topped up. Yeah, I guess it was a little sketchy to have my battery go zeroed on me. So I will use the regular large battery because they just hold more charge. I'm definitely going to run out of silicon here, though. So I have 23 of these so far. 24. Oh, you can't really block wind in the game. It has to be fully enclosed. Wind is not something... Wind is like a universal wind. Um... So no, I don't think it's going to block wind. And if it does, I can always stick the wind turbines on top of the on top of the thing too. Treat some pets, please. You got it. You'll notice soon. I'll only be able to make uh, a fraction of the glass I require. There's always more silicon. Hey, Macho. Welcome to the stream at the very end. So the stairs will be here. I'll put frames underneath. You know, maybe... Maybe I'll have it go... This way. If you're worried about uh, blocking stuff. Yeah, why not? I could even have it be embedded in the, uh, in the thing. Like that. I don't think my scrubber much appreciated it, but uh, I don't care how that scrubber feels. And I'm definitely not going to have all the uh, required materials to finish this. I'm going to need to get more silicon, but it's a start. If only had three arms, this would be a lot easier.
Oh, I'm already out of glass. Well, I'll lay these out so I have a concept of what I need. So then we come up here, and I think what I'll do is I'll have, um, I'll have frames underneath, and it will be too wide. So right now I only have, um, I only have three solar panels, so I'm going to go out four. And this is obviously going to chill the base a lot, because uh, I'm adding a huge volume to the base. But not heating it. That way I can walk down this tunnel. So then this... Oh. Up. Up. Yep, so you can kind of see the, the layout here now. I wish it was light out, but... It's not all that aesthetically pleasing, but it is a skywalk. This will also allow me to gauge roughly how much more material I need. We need a bunch more silicon, a little, maybe we need steel too. So the idea will be, this will be a clear walkway. Maybe with, like, glass floors, and then the solar panels will be here. And I've actually laid it out for four now. Uh, I'll cut the, the ends off so I, I can build this quicker. And what we'll do is we'll have it be expandable for the future, where I can add more panels out that way when I have a greater desire for solar panel power. But this project is... Yeah, it's complicated. I mean, this is why I was avoiding it to begin with. Okay. Let's get some silicon. And uh, I see the time. I know that I'm going to be running up and over. Hopefully I'll be able to do this quick. I probably won't be, but hopefully. be it for that node. Let's see if 65 is going to be enough. Did I ever get the scanner working? Yeah, when I loaded back in today, it uh, it just magically worked. I didn't break it or anything. It was just broken. Such is the way of, uh, of this game sometimes. No rhyme or reason. It just breaks down. I, like, today I had, uh, the ogre break for no reason. Just the way it is. Come on, light. I think it will light when I suck out some of the waste gas. I should have pulled waste gas first. Well, there's always more volatiles if it doesn't. Come on. So when's the next time we can expect to hear from you? Now, if you're asking about my schedule. There you go.
Remove that from being embedded. So I think I had, what, 26 walls and 9 glass sheets? Does that sound right? Something like that? I also wanted some steel frames, so I have one of the at least three I'm going to require. And then I need some steel sheets to go with that too. At least six. The solar panels themselves require glass as well. I haven't really factored that glass in yet. Just one little project at a time. All right. Get that set up. Uh, let's hope I have enough glass. I'll make a little bit more glass. Didn't I have more large batteries? I guess I didn't. All right, little battery swap. And I'm all set to go. Yeah, the GPR probably um, desynced with the tablet when I saved and loaded, something like that. And I didn't want to spend any more time trying to debug it because I'm not an alpha tester for this game, you know, just a streamer. So I didn't care about getting it fixed. So the solar panels need to be placed on uh, frames, but then once the solar panels are down, I can replace them uh, re and put something more elegant underneath. In fact, I didn't even really need to fully uh, weld it. I could have just partial welded. And then the rest here is just uh, the glass required to encase it so it's airtight. I need more um, wall kits for the end here. So two more wall kits at the very least. I should have put down maybe, maybe five more wall kits for uh, where the solar panels are going to go. But I can have them be wall kits that are uh, solid and not windowed, so they don't look too hideous. Is that all the all the windows? Yep. Need to make sure that these are encased down here too. They were not. So I need six more wall kits because I'm, I'm missing one here as well. All right, so six wall kits. One, two, three, yep, six wall kits. And uh, then we're good. <laughs> right as you ask, what about the base of the stairs? And I go, what about the base of the stairs? So, good call. So here are the solar panels, and these solar panels, I'm going to need one more sheet of glass too, because the solar panels all require glass. So I'm doing six more windows, and then three solar panels, so nine glass, and I have eight. Wall kits, so wall kits cannot, they can be used as floors, yeah, but not as floors where you install things on them. Um, that's a little different. The floor types that you install things on are only, like, frames. So a lot of things require to only be installed on frames. And one glass.
And I'll start pulling out uh, some of the things I'm going to need to build it as well. The logic. The logic I.O. actually might be best to install inside the base uh, because it produces heat and it will help to heat the base passively, which is odd, but I mean, it's just the way it is. Uh, I don't actually want to fill my hands, though, because then I won't be able to work at all. Okay, back out we go. Yeah, as you may have noticed, the lander is gone. That last storm uh, killed it. I believe they need to be faced this way, which is kind of inconvenient, but whatever. So there's the solar panel duels. Right now they have an efficiency of 45% because they're not quite pointing at the sun and there's stuff in the way. All right, let's finish uh, sealing it up. Okay. There we go. So that's the bottom. And now that they're installed, we're going to seal... We're going to replace the floor type. Actually, the floor type is going to be like wall type probably, right? So... I'm going to need um, more plastic sheets than I currently have for that. And then two windows. So it's going to look like this, which looks a bit more elegant, but I'm not going to install the, I'm not going to install them just yet because uh, I want to lay down the cabling and I don't want to block the interaction spot. So I'm going to need uh, two, four, six uh, plastic for that. But for now, let's remove that. So the next up, uh, the sensor. So I need a daylight sensor to be able to set up these solar panels and uh... What the... Gah! Gah! Are... Are you kidding me? Game, could you not try to murder me at every possible chance? Thank you very much. Um, well, that's annoying. I'm actually going to change the way these are angled. And let's patch up my suit because right now it's leaking. Thanks, Clang. I saw chat you all talking about Clang and then the Clang got me. So chat, I blame you talking about all that clang. I'm glad I, I printed myself a new suit, though, because uh, that could have been real bad otherwise. So I'm going to stick the data towards the inside and the power towards the outside instead. And then I might just have to angle the base later on, but that's fine. Alright, so data and power. There we go. So then the data ports are here. Um, let's get the daylight sensor. So I'm going to stick a daylight sensor. I'll stick the daylight sensor here. Because I don't really care. And then hook these panels up to the daylight sensor. So the data ports here are going to be what allows me to control them 
with uh, automation processing units and all that stuff. All right, there we go. And the daylight sensor senses the solar angle. Uh, so the next step is to glass seal this up. So now I'm inside and then to vent this out. Which is going to equalize the pressure between the base and this section. Okay, it's being incredibly difficult. Alright, so now the base got obviously colder. That flicked some of the heaters on. And less pressure. But that that was to be expected, uh, uh, obviously, because uh, I was mixing in a lot of cold air. And this will eventually warm up. Uh, so the next part of this project is the automation cabling stuff. So let's grab that. So I have two logic memory. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to actually put the logic systems on this network down here. Um, so let's move this stuff around. Um, Ho-hum. Shove it in there. Oh, you can see the battery's losing charge because it got cold in here. That's interesting to, to note. Switch my batteries out. And I also want to remove this bench because it's going to be in the way. All right, so logic memory. So logic. what logic memories do is they just hold a number so that you can do calculations with. Uh, the processors do the math, so I'm going to stick processors here. Let's go with hmm, here and here. Uh, I am going to need more cables. Where's my copper? Then we have I.O., which is input-output. It's either it can read data or write data. And... Oddly enough, I'm going to probably install this under the stairs. Just to hide it. Nest it out of the way. These, um, some of these processors require power. So, two readers. And then... Two batch writers. And because they require power, they generate small amounts of heat. That's why I wanted them inside the base, so that they can passively heat up the base for me. Uh, okay, these stairs I'll put away for now while I wire everything up. Uh, let's grab the labeler and label things. So that we know what we're working with. So this is going to be... Well, let's start with the... The sensor. So this is the... Solar daylight sensor. And then... The memory. One is going to be... We're going to call this... Uh, logic memory slope. And logic memory... Y... Intercept. The logic memory slope, if I aim at the dials here, I can give them numbers. So this is going to be 0.666667 or two thirds. So now the memory, if I look at it, has a state of 0.666667. And then this memory, the y intercept, I'm going to give it the 
uh, value of 50. You can also do this with screwdrivers, but it's easier to do with a labeler. Uh, then the readers, so these logic readers here are going to be horizontal and vertical. And then the batch writers are going to be also horizontal and vertical. These are going to be reading the horizontal angle of the sun and then writing out the horizontal uh, value of the solar panel, reading the vertical angle of the sun and writing out the vertical angle of the solar panel. And then these math units are going to be uh, uh, multiply and add. Okay. So now I have them labeled, I can stick the labeler away. Uh, how's my power? It's drawn down a little bit, so I'm gonna lay off of the um, lay off of the heaters for now. Alright, so if I want this to be powered up, I'm gonna need so many more cables. It's all right. I have a lot of, uh, I have a lot of materials in that bench. So I've decided to put it on uh, this network here because this is a underutilized uh, battery. You want to spread out your power drain so that you don't have one area power controller responsible for way, 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 way too much. Temperature, no. All right, let's get this wired. So what's important is that um, everything that requires power to be wired up power and data all wired up. I'm sure there's a, like a more elegant way to do it, but I'm going to do it the inelegant way, which is also quick and dirty. So the math units have to be powered up um, all four sides because it's input, output, power, and um, the process. Was incorrect, and then the batch writers and readers uh, have fewer ports. They don't have rear ports. But I need more cables already. Also, I'm like running around in my negative three Celsius uh, base, which is fine. I I basically took my uh, suit offline. Except for the light bulb. Another reason to, to put it on this network instead of the other one is that uh, this network here is less congested with data, which is going to make it easier to set this up to run. Yeah, negative three Celsius is way warmer than outside. You're not wrong about that. Outside is brutal. And I can hear the wind kind of um, picking up speed, so I'm going to turn on the heaters again. So now the daylight sensor is connected to the readers and writers. So I need to grab my screwdriver and set up the readers and writers. So the logic reader for vert, the input here needs to be the daylight sensor. 
solar daylight sensor. And then the mode or the variable is going to be vertical. So when I turn this on, it should read the same value here. So the vertical angle right now is 107 degrees approximately. And this reader is reading 106 point, you know, whatever. So this is set correctly. Uh, the horizontal reader, same exact, set it up for the solar daylight sensor. And then the variable is horizontal. So the horizontal over here will be 171 or 172. And the it's set correctly. Uh, next up is going to be the, um, uh, let's see. We're going to want to multiply the vertical angle by the slope. So the multiply unit, this is going to take the logic reader vertical angle and the memory slope and multiply them together. And this is where I'm going to lose most of you, but that's okay. As long as it works, right? So if I find the, uh, the, the, the math process here. And what this is doing is it's taking the vertical angle of 91, multiplying it by the slope of two thirds. So two thirds of 90 is about 60. So we know that's working. All right, this here is going to take the, um, the math, logic math multiply and add 50 to it. Logic math multiply. And then this will be the memory of the y-intercept or 50. And then the process here is going to be adding. So 55 plus five, 50 is 105. Uh, the last here is the horizontal batch reader. Uh, the horizontal writer is just going to take the... So this this one. The input here is going to be the logic reader horizontal. Where is that? There it is. And then the output is going to be to the... Solar panels, and it's going to uh, batch write horizontal. And you can see them starting to move already. And then this batch writer here, its input is going to be the logic math add. There it is. And then it's going to write out to all of the solar panels and it's going to go for vertical. The other thing I'm going to need to do is rotate these panels because they weren't installed... Uh, they weren't installed uh, at the angle that they were supposed to. Oh, you know what? It's not going to let me do that without changing the... Okay, I see. Let me let me fix that. This is when it gets a little bit more annoying. Because I didn't build them on the axis that it wanted to be built on. So this here, I'm going to rotate like that. And run the data on this port. And you'll see it point itself towards the sun. for 98% efficiency. Not bad. Let's fix the other two. So, I would not be surprised if I lost you here because of how complex that was. Uh, once, once I'm done uh, fixing the angles of this stuff, I'll explain it once more. I'll go through it. But this is effectively how to do two axis tracking. The other thing is I don't have the heavy cables um, to... I'm going to have to space these out a little bit more because of the, the ports. So I'm only going to be able to set up two at the moment. Uh, in fact, I don't want... But that, um, that actually helps me as well because they crushed me. So I'd rather have them spaced out a little bit better so that they don't crush me to death in the future. 
because, uh, you know, my death counter is still at zero, and I'd like to keep it that way. And this way I can fit in between and maybe not be crushed to death. Maybe. Ah! I don't want to be near it as it's moving. And then all I would need to do is to stick heavy cables out this way and over to the uh, heavy cable network. So to go over it one last time, uh, this daylight sensor, in order to work, its data port needs to be facing your sunrise. So the sun rises over that way. This is at 90 degrees. So the daylight sensor needs to be facing 90. You take the daylight sensor and you read the two values that concern you. You read the vertical solar angle and the horizontal solar angle. The horizontal solar angle, what you do with that is you immediately feed it to a batch writer, which takes the horizontal angle and writes that horizontal angle to all of the solar panels. The vertical angle needs to go through some processing. So this vertical angle first goes and multiplies by two thirds, which is stored in this memory, and then adds 50, which is stored in this memory. And then that is then fed to the batch writer for a vertical angle and fed to all of the solar panels. And now these solar panels are running at 100% or 99% efficiency, which is as good as it's gonna get. And it slowly tracks the sun throughout the day. And that's how you would do that. Uh, so let's wrap this up. To wrap this up, I want to, um, nope, that's a table. I wanna install the stairs again, which, is going to be a problem because of the that window right there. Oh, actually, all of this. Because it's facing inwards. So I'll fix that next stream. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to wrap it up by uh, hooking it up to heavy cables. So I'm probably going to need a few more heavy cables in this. Oh, and let me turn those off. It's now 9 degrees in the base, which is, uh, which is a bit more comfortable. So I'll print up some heavy cables and I'll hook up the solar panels to the main trunk, which is the cable right there. So I'll send, um, I'll send this heavy trunk cable over to the solar panels and, and we'll be good. Wait, why is this? Oh, cause I, yeah, okay. I understand now. I was, uh, I enclosed it from the other side. Yeah, that's how to set up two-axis solar. Uh, you don't need two-axis solar when you are on the moon or space because there's only one axis you're concerned about, which is the vertical angle, not the horizontal angle. Um, on Europa, the horizontal angle, you know, the, the sun is not straight up in the sky. It's at a 43 degree angle or something like that. So that's why you need to read the horizontal angle for Europa. All right, I don't know if this is enough, but let's see if it is. And the reason why I have them spaced out is to keep the power and data separate, like Cheese said. Um, you can combine the power and data, but then all of this networking here would have to be made with the heavy watt cables. Or else they uh, run the risk of burning out. Alright, no storm incoming, good. So here is the main trunk line which all my power producers are on this line here. And I'll send this. I'm definitely not going to have enough heavy cables, but I'll send this over to the solar panels. You like the efficient growth of the base? Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not going for pretty. I'm going for... A mix of educational, so that you all can learn how to play the game, and also a, a bit of uh, just 
so that it can fit more projects into a given period of time. Um, oh man, alright, I can actually finish the network from indoors. Unfortunately, the sun will basically be below the horizon by the time I'm done, meaning that the solar panels aren't going to be generating any power. But each solar panel, while the sun's up, generates about 200 watts each, which is pretty decent. It's not amazing, but it's pretty decent. It's a it's an okay way, an okay reliable amount of power, I suppose. Um, you know, you just have to account for the whole storm thing, so it does raise the cost because uh, because if you didn't have to account for the storm, you know, you could just stick them outside and hook them up like you do on the moon, which is why the moon is so uh, easy in comparison. There's one. And yeah, they're still generating 175 watts with the sun. Well, it's about to be zero. With the sun low on the horizon. And now if I grab my network analyzer, you can see it's on the same trunk as the upright wind turbines and the wind turbines. So there's solar. Okay, well, it's gone now. But yeah, I'll have to I'll have to fix the stairs uh, next stream if there is a next stream. I know that sounds scary, right? <laughs> if. So for my own sanity, let's give myself a little water and a little food. So if I don't remember to do that in the future, it's no problem. And that, my friends, wraps it up. An extra 30-something uh, minutes, because solar took me a while. Thank you for tuning in to Stationeers Europa, which originally streamed live on Twitch April 14th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. But please keep in mind that I was streaming with the no backseating tag enabled, which means that I'm not really looking to be told what to do or how to do it. If you'd like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you like this series, please vote for it when it comes up in the polls. If you're interested to vote in the polls, the best way to do it is to join Discord. Rodamont.com or the description of this video have a link to Discord, and on Discord, you can sign up for announcements when polls go live. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you next episode. Stay safe out there, fellow stationers. <laughs>